Well, today's text tells us about a dream. The dream of Joseph, to be exact. And it's not surprising to hear talk of dreams at this particular time of year. We hear people talking about what they are dreaming of for Christmas. We see commercials on television that speak of what our dreams might be. And they could be great many things. They can be beautiful trees or warm family gatherings, all kind of different gifts, diamond rings, sugar plum fairies, and new bicycles. And if your dreams fall in there, I hope it comes true for you. But what about our dreams the rest of the year? What are those dreams about? I suppose for many of us, our dreams fall into one of two categories most of the time. I know that mine do. The first category are those dreams that we do not particularly like and we are glad to wake from. Dreams where perhaps we are being chased by something or someone. Dreams where perhaps bad things are happening or the one that always seems to hit every minister I know at some point, usually on Saturday night, the dream that it is about five minutes before the worship service and we haven't even started on the sermon yet. <laughs> but there are other kind of dreams as well. And those dreams are the good ones, the dreams that are, that are wonderful, the dreams that we wake up wanting to remember, dreams about reconciliation, about people coming together who may have been torn apart, dreams about enemies coming together at the table, differences put aside. I've dreamed of being able to fly in the air. I've also dreamed of new life and hope. I dreamed of many things that I'm sure you have as well. The interesting thing about dreams is this. They have a lot to do with sleep. And did you know that sleep is one of the biggest areas of study going on right now? Now, I'm not just meaning those of us who've had sleep studies. I know many of you have. I use a CPAP every night and I rest much easier because of that. But a number of years ago, scientists began to look into the reason about why we sleep. Now, that may sound like a stupid question. We're tired, right? That's why we sleep. But scientists began to realize that that's not necessarily so. In fact, think about this. You could go home this afternoon and lay down on your couch and never fall asleep, but get up an hour or two later and feel rested and refreshed. We do not necessarily have to have sleep for us to get rest. So doing what they do, scientists have begun to explore these options. And one of the more interesting things that has come out is that some scientists are saying that one of the reasons we sleep is that we need to dream. I think that's kind of interesting. I had a dog for many years, his name was Buck. And I can remember when Buck would take his naps he would begin these little twitchy actions. I know you've all seen this, and we would joke that he's chasing rabbits in his dreams. So it appears that even animals dream when they are asleep. So this, this is why the scientists have begun to wonder that perhaps these things, these movies that play in our head while we are sleeping is one of the primary reasons why we sleep in the first place. And I think that's interesting since today's lesson is about a dream. The fourth Sunday of this year is about a dream, the dream of Joseph. Now, this is not Mary's dream. This is Joseph's dream. And that gets a little bit interesting because, to be honest, we probably know Mary's Christmas story a little bit better than we know Joseph's. In fact, we tend to put them all together and not even realize that in two of the Gospels, Mark and John, there's really no account of the physical birth of Jesus at all. We have four Gospels, and they are dramatically different in how they tell the story of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. In Matthew's Gospel, we get the story of his father, Joseph. Luke, the emphasis is more on Mary, his mother. But this year in the Gospel readings, it is the lectionary readings, it's the year of Matthew, and so it is Joseph that we hear about today. And consider his point of view, which you heard just a few moments ago. On the one hand, you could say that Joseph has dreamed of something wonderful. But at the same time, you could say he has dreamed of something terrifying. Because he has found out that Mary, whom he is engaged to, is expecting a child. That would be a hard thing to learn. 
But at the same time, he has learned that that child is to be the Messiah, the chosen one, the one who will save the people. So which way will he go? Is this a good dream or a bad dream? Joseph had some serious work to do. He had some serious work to do in the area of trust because this is calling him to trust not only God, but to trust Mary as well. And that would have been a hard thing to do. Now, I know Mary was his wife, and surely Joseph must have loved Mary, but but still, this took a lot of trust. And this is why Joseph's dream is so important. Joseph dreamed of the salvation of the world. And for Joseph, the way of salvation meant trusting someone else. And you know what? That's hard. It's hard to place our trust in someone else. It's hard to believe in someone else, much less just believe them, right? We live in a day and time when there is much rancor and arguing and anger out there in the world. And so we tend to separate ourselves. We tend to pull apart. We tend to stand alone and away from other people. And we tend to think that whatever they are thinking and whatever they are dreaming and whatever they are believing, well, it may not be right. And it may not be right because it's not what I believe. You see, there's a lesson for us here. Like Joseph, sometimes we are supposed to trust God. And sometimes the lesson is that we need to trust other people as well. One of the questions I get asked a lot as a minister has to do with these things like we read about today, Joseph's dream and visits of angels and and all sort of things like that. And people say, why doesn't God talk directly to me like that anymore? You know, I read these stories about these biblical characters and they're having these marvelous dreams and visions and they're seeing all these incredible things. Why can't God be that way? Well, the first thing I would say, and I'm not sure it always worked out that well. All those people that were hanging around with Jesus for three years saw a lot of amazing things, didn't they? Thousands fed, lepers healed, the lame walked. And yet we ask, where were they at the end when Jesus died? You see, all this talk about amazing things like this, if that's what we want, if that's what we are focused on, then I think somehow we are missing the point of this story. We are missing the point that God does not always appear in these miraculous and incredible events. That sometimes God appears in the most usual, the most mundane, the most ordinary, and the most normal. You see, I don't think the problem is that God is not appearing. I think the problem is that we are not looking. That we spend so much time perhaps looking up for a miracle, expecting the miraculous, that we are not spending the time looking around and looking in the eyes of our families and our friends and our neighbors across the street, the person sitting down the pew from us, the person sitting at the next table from us at the restaurant. Perhaps we need to take our eyes down for a while and begin to look there. And to begin to see that there is much going on in the world. That God is active. That God is doing. It's just that we are not watching. Let me ask you a question. What are you giving for Christmas this year? Now I didn't ask you what you are getting. That's usually the one we focus on, right? If we follow the commercials right now, apparently it's a Buick. Have you seen the commercial where every, the entire commercials everyone giving them? Hey, nothing wrong with Buicks. My parents had one. I like them. Okay, but but I'm not asking what you are getting. I'm asking what you are giving. I hope what you are giving is something wonderful. But here's the thought. Maybe what we could give this year is that trust that I was speaking of earlier. And if we want to throw a dream into it, then maybe what we can give this year is that we will take the great risk of believing in someone else's dreams. When's the last time you asked someone that question? 
What are your dreams? What are your hopes? What are you thinking about all of these things? And oftentimes people have incredible thoughts and deep dreams. And if they could only get the trust and the love and the care that they need from another person, then those could be realized. Perhaps the greatest gift we can give this year is to have faith in other human beings. To believe in the dreams of our neighbors. Believe in the dreams of the person you love. Believe in the dreams of your enemy. Jesus would want us to do that as well. Believe in the dreams of your spouse or your partner or your children or your friends. Trust them and believe in their dreams. If it is true, as I mentioned earlier, that one of the reasons we sleep is to dream, then perhaps the reason we have relationships is so that we will have someone who will believe our dreams and we will believe theirs. You see, I think God works most times through these relationships, these everyday relationships with the people we see all the time. God works through ordinary people like Mary and Joseph. And yes, there are miracle stories in here. But God also works through the everyday and the mundane and the average. If we only had the eyes to see, if we would only look, then maybe we would know that this year we can believe in dreams this Christmas. We can believe in dreams this Christmas. And maybe in those dreams, we will get a glimpse of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.